Can you find the crab in this clip? If you can't, don't worry. Decorator crabs are experts at camouflaging themselves. Decorator crabs are a group of spider crabs that get their name because of the camouflaging behavior that they have. While different species all decorate in different ways, each one makes use of algae or other living organisms by attaching them to their bodies. In the Salish Sea, we have multiple species of decorator crab. The three we will see today are the graceful decorator crab, the short-nosed decorator crab, and the kelp crab. How do decorator crabs decorate? When you look closely at the graceful decorator crab and short-nosed decorator crab, you can see there are lots of tiny hairs, or setae. These are hooked, velcro-like structures that the crab uses to hook pieces of algae onto their body. Sensory setae also line the legs of decorator crabs, helping them sense their world around them. Using their pincers, or chile, they pinch off pieces of sponge, algae, hydroids, or other decorations. Then they explore it and shape it with their mouths before reaching behind to hook the decoration onto their setae. The kelp crab doesn't decorate nearly as much as other species of decorator crab. And in fact, their shells are smooth. However, some kelp crabs will decorate their rostrum, or the nose space between their eyes, with pieces of algae they will want to eat later. Why do they decorate? There are a couple of reasons. The first is camouflage. Trying to find a decorator crab that is covered in pieces of algae is difficult to do. And scientists have long hypothesized that visual camouflage was the primary reason for the crab's decorations. However, some research indicates that decorator crabs may be more interested in the texture of the algae, as one of the primary predators, the octopus, hunts primarily with touch. When you pick up a decorator crab covered in algae or sponge, it is easy to feel how the decorations help hide the crab from the sensitive touch receptors of an octopus. Whether for optical or textural camouflage, the adaptation is helpful for the crabs to avoid conflict. Another reason to decorate is that some species of decorator are saving food for later. Most species of decorator crab are opportunistic eaters. Most of their diet does consist of algae and decomposing matter. If you look at their pincers, you can see they are not adapted for crushing or attacking like a red rock crab pincers are and are instead slender and delicate, far more suited to nipping at algae and sponges. Decorator crabs molt when they grow. Their hard exoskeleton is great protection, but when they grow too big for it, they must shed the exoskeleton and grow a new one. Depending on the amount of food they have access to, decorator crabs can molt mm, two or three times a year. During this process, the crab will squeeze out the back of their shell, leaving behind a limp, dead-looking shell that you may find on the beach at low tide and mistake for a dead crab. In reality, the only thing left of the crab in their old shell is their gills, which they regrow after molting. Molting is a dangerous process because when the crab is finished, they are soft and vulnerable to predators. It's usually best for them to find a protected spot to molt, and they are generally more active at night, so don't be surprised if you never actually see them doing it. Crabs mate using internal fertilization, not broadcast spawning like many of their fellow invertebrates. That means that a male crab and a female crab have to find one another. The female crab will carry her fertilized eggs until they hatch making sure the tightly packed bundles have enough oxygen and stay protected from predators. When ready, the baby crabs, known as zoe, hatch and start living their lives as plankton, floating in the ocean currents and in most cases being carried away from their parents. The little zoe feed off phytoplankton, growing and developing until they become large enough to settle onto the ocean floor. When you are at the beach, you are unlikely to see decorator crabs because they tend to live in slightly deeper water. However, there are many species of shore crab that can be found under rocks and in tide pools that if you are very still and gentle, you will be able to observe. You can also wear a pair of rain boots and try walking slowly among the seaweed at low tide, where you might be able to spot the well-camouflaged kelp crab in its natural habitat. Beware when picking up any crabs as they are delicate and can be injured if you drop them. 
Some species of crabs have pincers that can hurt you, like the red rock crab. So before you pick up anything, it is a smart idea to identify the species first.